rules of security portrayed in this film are, in general, applicable to any mechanized or motorized unit. Security means taking every precaution you can to keep yourself from getting knocked out of the scrap. How can this best be done? Very simply, you have to remember five things. Five of them. They are advanced preparations, alertness, concealment, dispersion, and firepower. This sketch represents a mechanized column marching into a combat area. It is not correct in scale as far as the distances between the units are concerned. Its purpose is to show the positions of each of the units and how those positions afford the best possible security and protection to the main body. Here is the main body. There are ground and air reconnaissance elements far out in front. Flank guards at each side. A rear guard coming along behind. And the advance guard directly ahead of the main body. Yet with all that protection surrounding it on all sides, the main body itself must take certain measures of local security. The enemy is interested in getting at the main body, not the protection. So we're going to take an interior tank platoon in the main body and show how those five basic principles I just mentioned are applied. Let's begin at the beginning. Advanced preparations. For one thing, you have to be ready for gas. Every two weeks, a panel on each tank must be freshly painted with liquid vesicant detector paint. This is remarkable stuff. When gas droplets touch it, the color of the paint changes from green to red and gives you a warning. Your dank container may not seem important to you now, but make sure it's properly filled. If gas comes your way and you have to decontaminate, it's mighty useful. You know what kind of monkeys you're up against, and you know enough to keep your gas masks ready and handy. It'll be too late to start looking for them when a gas attack is on. And nobody needs to tell you how you depend on your fuel. Even if he's sure the gasoline tank has been filled up the previous night, the tank commander must recheck it. Another must is, check your engines. A stalled tank is a menace to the whole column. And check your tracks carefully. Faulty tracks can run you into a lot of trouble. Your large caliber gun isn't much use without shells. Make sure you have your full quota. Just one shell may decide whether you live or die. And be sure your ammunition is clean and undebted. Machine gun ammunition is just as important. Someone may have slipped up. Look it over, make sure. Before moving out on a march, the platoon leader calls his tank commanders together to study a map of the terrain they will cross. They must know every point where an enemy air or ground force may attack, where the enemy may find natural cover. And they must know the route from start to finish so that if one tank falls behind, it will be able to rejoin the column. Since every man in a tank must know every other man's job, each tank commander shows his whole crew the route that the column will follow. That's advanced preparation. Take the second security point, alertness. 
Surprise is your enemy's best weapon. And the only way to keep him from using it is to be always on your guard. Every man in each tank turret is an air observer. He must also glance to the rear occasionally. Assistant drivers must have an eye on the flanks for signs of possible surprise attacks by enemy mechanized units. Whether there's radio silence or not, the radio tender must keep his receiver tuned into the platoon leader's net to receive urgent messages. And it's each crew member's duty to know what's going on too. That's what the periscopes are there for. No matter how tough a tank commander is, continuously being on the alert is bound to tire him. He needs a relief once in a while. The turret's a spot for an alert soldier. He must be quick to spot messengers, catch all signals from the platoon leader quickly and accurately, and to pass them along, so that the platoon leader always has perfect control. Those are the things that come under the head of alertness. Always look for signs of a surprise flank or rear attack, or attack from the air. Relieve the man in your turret frequently. Keep on the lookout for radio and motorcycle messages. Now the third point in security, concealment. One thing certain, you can't hide tanks in a dust cloud. So unless you like bombs raining down around you, keep off dusty road shoulders. Concealment depends on quick thinking and sound judgment. For instance, suppose you're in the sun on a road and there's shade to the right, but there's also a dusty shoulder. Will you choose the shade and the dust or the sun and no dust? The sun may make you a target from the air, but dust would show you up for miles around. Pass up the shade. Naturally, when you find shade with no soft shoulder or dangerous dust, take advantage of it. Shade can help conceal you from an enemy air observer. Speaking of enemy air observers, be careful of reflections from goggles, even in shaded areas. Goggles are to protect your eyes, not to flash your position to the enemy. If you are not using them, do not wear them on your head or keep them in any other position where they will throw reflections. When your principal object is speed, your tank color may have to stick to an open road with practically no concealment. But when you have time, your good sense will tell you to get all the concealment you can. You won't see enemy planes in time to duck out of sight. When you cut across country, you'll find it very difficult to avoid dust. Always try to pick a route where you won't be moving in a telltale cloud. Where dust is unavoidable, it's useful to remember that tanks in line formation raise a much smaller dust cloud than the same tanks in column formation. When you're moving across hilly terrain, remember there's nothing an enemy gunner likes better than tanks silhouetted against the sky. Move around the base of the hill and keep defilated. Let's sum up concealment. Use concealing terrain wherever possible. Don't silhouette yourself against the sky. Never flash a signal to the sky by exposing shiny objects. 
Don't follow the shade when by doing so you will kick up dust from soft shoulders. Remember above all, try to avoid raising dust clouds. Sometimes this can be done by moving slowly. The fourth point in security, dispersion. Proper distance between vehicles is one of the most important and yet the most often disregarded. Tanks must never bunch up like a lot of cows with their tails to the breeze. If they do, they give the enemy a target that looks as big as the broadside of a barn and twice as inviting. If a bomb misses one tank, it is certain to hit the next in line and it may damage more than one. Keep your proper distances. During daylight, that is at least 75 yards. Under some conditions, the distances between tanks should be more than 75 yards, but never less. Be especially careful when going down a hill where it's easy to close up by inching ahead without meaning to. If you have engine trouble and have to pull out for repairs, move far enough away not to bunch the rest of the column. To avoid confusion and perhaps a dangerous general halt, signal the rest of the column to continue the march. And when your tank has been repaired, don't try to catch up to your former position. Wait for a halt, then rejoin your platoon. Keep your distance. In daylight, that means 75 yards, sometimes more, but never less. Space out and keep spaced out. The proper distance is at least 75 yards. One more important point in security, firepower. Protection by the proper use of your weapons. Firepower is your ace in the hole when you're attacked. Your large caliber guns are not loaded when you're moving, but keep them ready and pointed in the right direction. That's only common sense. The large turret gun of the leading tank should be pointed dead ahead. The second tank's large turret gun should also be trained dead ahead. To guard against sudden enemy attacks, cover all directions at once. Point the large turret guns of tanks one and two dead ahead. Point that of tank three to the right. Tank four to the left. And tank five to the rear. Keep your anti-aircraft guns half loaded in case of an air attack. The belt in the receiver, not in the ammunition box. Nine out of ten air attacks by low-flying planes will come from the front or the rear of the column. Because when planes drop bombs along the length of the column, they have more than one target. If their bombs overshoot the first tank, they may get the second or third. To beat this type of attack, alternate tank commanders aim to front and rear Take a lead and fire at the targets.
Say your column has been spotted by an enemy air observer and bombers are out to destroy you. The first rule is this. Tanks never halt in an air attack during daylight. Push right on, even if you have concealment. Your tank gives a lot of protection. A moving target is much harder to hit and you won't lose time. Learn to recognize all types of enemy planes. Each of the tanks is responsible for air observation. Its observer, if he sights planes, will pass the information to other tanks by hand and arm signals. When a plane is sighted, close all hatches except the turret hatch. A bomb or a bomb fragment inside your tank would disable both the tank and the crew. And train your anti-aircraft guns to get the best pattern of fire by pointing alternate guns to the front and the rear. any attack, it's your tank commander's duty to report the results of enemy action. Your platoon leader then reports the condition of his platoon to the company commander. You have seen how our five points were applied for security on the march. Now let's see how they work for security at the halt. As you all know, there are two kinds of halts. One is the short 10-minute halt, which is made about every two hours so that the men can check their vehicles, stretch, relax, and take a quick smoke. The other is the long halt to refuel, eat, and check your equipment. Let's take the short halt first. After the ground is tested to make sure it is solid, back your tank into position if you have to, but don't ever park so that you'll have to back out. Backing out is too slow if there is an attack. Make a first echelon maintenance inspection. Refresh your memory about the route you're to follow. Now for alertness. The first precaution a halted column takes is to place guards on the hilltops and other good observation points to watch the surrounding terrain. When you're halted, just as when you're on the march, surprise is the enemy's deadliest weapon. The enemy is smart and you can't afford to take chances. A man must always be posted at the platoon leader's radio to handle orders and warnings promptly. As always, concealment is of great importance at the halt. Use anything that screens you from the enemy's view. And remember, he has observers in the air as well as on the ground. Dispersion and firepower at the short halt are two points so closely knit that they can be treated as one security measure. Just as they were on the march, guns should be trained so as to cover all the avenues of approach. And each tank must have a man stationed at the guns in the turret. The distance between any two tanks at the short halt during a march must never be less than 75 yards. When tanks are properly spaced, bombs may fall between the tanks without damaging any of them. Even in the case of a hit, one enemy bomb can't get more than one tank. When the 10 minutes are up, the tanks move out on signal. They go right into column without stopping on the road to form. Those are the security measures for the short halt.
At the long halt, the same rules apply and a few more besides. At longer halts, your outfit may pull further off the road. In this event, a man must be posted near the road to watch for the company commander's signal to resume the march. At long halts, it's necessary to dig prone shelters. Their protection against flying shell fragments and many a soldier owes his life to a prone shelter. Eat while you work. It may not be good for the digestion, but first echelon maintenance is too important to wait. Good concealment is, as always, most important. Since at long halts your column may pull well off the road, wipe out all tracks running to your halting areas. Make use of anything that will hide you from the enemy. And be sure to stay in the shade. Follow it with your vehicle as the sun moves. When there is no other concealment, get out that camouflage net. Here's a question. If we do not camouflage completely at a halt, what is the use in bothering with any concealment? The answer is this, a lot of use. Even though a sharp-eyed enemy observer can spot you, partial camouflage will hide the strength and type of your element. Some concealment is always better than none. When marches are made at night, the same five points of security we have been talking about apply. There are a few differences in execution. At night, for instance, vehicles stay just far enough apart so that each driver can see the tactical light of the vehicle ahead. During air raids, and when enemy flares light the sky, vehicles always stop, both for concealment and to avoid bunching up. Firing, of course, gives your position away. Under no circumstances do you fire on planes at night, unless you're positive that you have been discovered. Any light is dangerous at night. You may be dying for a smoke, but that doesn't mean your buddy should die for the same reason. That's about it. Remember those five principles of security. Advanced preparation, alertness, concealment, dispersion, and firepower. You know that old saying, we live and learn. Well, it works the other way, too. You learn and live. <laughs>